Welcome to day one of what I'm calling Divas Week. It's a, just a special week-long training. And today's focus is on business systems. So I literally picked the least fun topic to go first, unless you're just very <laughs> type A and like regimented, then you'll love this. If you are not, you, you will be like, oh, why do we have to talk about this? But I promise you that all of this that I'm about to share is really important. Um, it's good to get these things um, figured out and in place now while you're newer um, because you're going to, your business is going to grow, your customer base, your team, um, and it's going to get to a place where you're going to be like, whoa, like if you don't already feel like, whoa, I have a business, you're going to be like, whoa, I have a business um, because that has happened in me within the last couple of years before I like I knew I had a business but when when I just started to see more things just kind of like um happen if that makes sense I was like oh this is for real this is really it's a business now and I had no reservations or hesitations about calling what I do a business and so I want to get y'all in the right the right mindset Vicky Vicky's been with me for um for five years now. So she's heard this before, but I know it's always a good, a good reminder. Um, so I've got a list, a list of different business systems, and we're just going to go through and, and talk about them. And, and our replay viewers can absolutely ask questions um, on the post in the group. They're welcome to do that. And if there's anything that I talk about that you have questions about and you need me to explain more, I'm happy to do that. Um, but I kind of wanted to go, I started out going in order of like what I thought was the most important thing. And then I stopped going in any side of set, any sort of order. So the first thing that I have is like your launch slash relaunch system. So we have so many new people on our team that came in and they're like, now what do I do? And so I wanted to just share just a couple, a couple little tips. And of course, if, if y'all on the Zoom have any great ideas, I mean, please, please jump in and, and share as well. But, you know, for me, my launch was in a very different time. We were not in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, it was normal life, so to speak. And um, getting together in person was like, no big thing. Vicky remembers, you know, it was normal life when we were, when we were brand new. Um, so what I did for my launch is probably pretty different than what a lot of people have done. I know a lot of people have really embraced online, but I know I'm hopeful, very hopeful that we'll get back to some sort of normalcy soon. Um, but regardless, regardless of if you're launching in person or if you're launching online, having that 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 one two or two or three whatever your what really it's your prerogative but having at least one kickoff party um that you work really really hard to get as many people to come to as possible that um is going to accomplish a couple things number one it's going to give you an opportunity to either practice doing a party or give you um, a chance to watch and see how a, a party goes if your sponsor's helping you. Um, it's hopefully, fingers crossed, going to get you some orders and get you some bookings and maybe even help you identify some sponsoring leads from your warm market. Um, the reason I have launch slash relaunch is because all of us non-newbies, we can relaunch our business Number one, you can relaunch your business as often as you want, but a lot of us do it during catalog change. And so, you know, it's almost essentially, we are all brand new consultants when that catalog changes. And it's our goal to have that celebratory kickoff and reach as many people as possible. Ava, Ava Lou, you're not gonna do that. Go see Aunt Tina. You can't do that, baby. Um, that celebratory kickoff to share the new catalog 
and hopefully get some sales and get some bookings and identify some sponsoring leads. So um, that's, that's kind of why I mentioned the relaunch. And when I was talking about launching, I mentioned multiple parties. Um, I've heard of people having a launch party every month for their first six months. Um, I've heard of people doing multiple launch parties within their first one. There's really no right or wrong. It's really up to your preference. But when you are brand new, and I think Michelle and Vicki can definitely agree with me, when you're when you're new, um, the goal is to spread the word as much as you can with the people that you already know about your business. And maybe they can't come to that first party. Maybe, you know, even if you're doing it online, maybe they've got, you know, ice skating or dance class or soccer that night and they're going to be focused on that and not necessarily focused on what's happening on the phone um, or maybe they're on vacation, whatever. Um, and so having those, having multiple things to invite people to, I think is super duper helpful. Um, and so no matter where you are, um, you can always launch, relaunch. And it's really, really is a, a lather, rinse, repeat kind of process. A lot of the things that we do in our business we do them over and over and over again. They're only new to the people who are experiencing them. They are not new to us at all. And so with, with that launch relaunch, uh, I also have listed a party system. So um, I do my home parties pretty much the same way every time. I'm, I'm a creature of habit anyways, and I like simple. And so if it's not broke, I won't fix it. Um, and so I would encourage everyone uh, especially as, you know, different places are in, in truly in different places with COVID right now. And there are probably people in this country who life is like pretty much normal where they're at. Um, probably a lot of our friends in the Midwest, I feel like they might've got a little lucky with it because everybody lives so far apart. All of us people in like neighborhoods are just dealing with a very different experience. But like, if you are on a farm, yeah, your, your experience is probably different, but um, as people start to get more into doing things in person, I think you've got to have your, your party system sorted out. And so I'll just give you a couple tips. I don't want to influence, I mean, I do want to influence people, but I don't want to completely influence people to where they're doing something that's not their comfort level. But um, my parties, like I said, very simple. I'm all about um, having fun, sharing information, but not completely like lecturing or boring people. So I have always, for almost nine years now, played the purse game. And it's, it's just something fun. It allows me to share information in a fun way. It's a game. People pay attention. Um, and it helps me just really like communicate all the important stuff that I want to tell people about, you know, our company, our products, hosting with me and our business opportunity. So I have other videos that, that really lay out the purse game. So I won't, I won't go through that all here, um, but I'll make sure that everyone has access to that. And then after that purse game, my next objective is to just let people sniff. I take all my scent testers. Those are those little pink bags we got in our kit and flip through the catalog and figure out what they wanna order. Personally, I do a party special at my in-person and online parties. Um, I am willing to lose a little bit of profit um, on that initial sale if it means, you know, A, enticing someone to buy or B, enticing them to spend a little more. It allows me to sell and sell more without feeling like I'm being salesy because it's like, here's the special. And you kind of either want it or you don't. Um, also with my party, you know, it's important that that the host feels like spoiled and, and I want her to feel like a big deal. So I usually give her a gift in front of everyone because I want the people at the party to feel like, oh, okay, well, yeah, I want, I want all my friends to see me get a gift too. Um, it's, it's all about like, it's FOMO. FOMO is real, fear of missing out. 
Um, and then uh, obviously I talk a little bit about the business with the party. And, and of course, as I'm talking to people about either, you know, shopping or booking, um, you know, people might ask me questions about the business opportunity or I might share some information with them. So always having your opportunity goggles on is super important. Um, and then, you know, that's my home party and my, my online party is different, but also I still try to keep it really, really simple. All my posts are meant to educate um, and get people engaged. I offer to send samples to the party guest. So there's a process for them to request samples. I do have a party special. Um, everyone shows up at the same time, or in theory, we all show up at the same time on party night. Um, I wasn't going live for a really long time, and I've started incorporating lives back into my party. Um, it's been really fun for me. It helps me feel like I'm being social with people. It gives them an opportunity to see my face, to hear my voice, to get warm fuzzies and be like, oh, this girl's nice. She's cool. I like her. Um, but I have all that. I have it all worked out. I, I mean, if someone said to me, Melina, I've got 25 friends that all want to show up on Facebook tomorrow night for a party, I'm ready to go. Um, so I've done all the, the prep work leading up so that I can just go and do that party. All right. And then under the party system, there's a um, one other thing that I didn't touch on and then one thing that I didn't touch enough on. So we talked about party post for those online parties, but host coaching, host coaching in both cases, really important. And I'll be honest, y'all, it's my least favorite thing to do. Um, and I think it's our host's least favorite part about hosting. Um, everyone wants their friends to show up. They want their friends to shop but people don't necessarily always want to do the, the, the behind the scenes work to make that happen. And so it's all about, you know, trying to make it as fun for them as possible, make it not seem like it's work. And sometimes that's easier said than done because we're asking them to personally message their friends to say, Hey, I invited you to this thing. Not just, you know, here, go invite, you know, 700 of your closest friends to this Facebook group or this Facebook event. Um, and let's just fingers crossed, hope like people come and, and participate. Um, everything about our business is relationship focused. And so, of course, with our host, they've got to be relationship focused with the people that they're trying to get to their party too. And then the last thing under party systems is booking new parties. So I would encourage if you don't have a booking game that you love, I would encourage you to find one. Um, I use for my virtual parties, I use Amanda Todd's dice game. It's simple, it's easy. I mean, you know, I'm a little biased, but <laughs> there are other people that are not me that are using it and are loving it too. Um, and there is a, an at-home version uh, or you can incorporate, you can make it an at-home version. Um, I, before I had um, knowledge of, of that dice game, I had this huge die that I got from um, a store called Five Below that Ava has since destroyed. So I don't have that die anymore, but I had this cute little sheet that I made and it had six different boxes and in each box was a different product. And I would tell people at, the, at my home parties like, hey, if you're interested in getting your friends together so you can earn some free and half price goodies, let me know. You can roll the die and you're, excuse me, you're going to get an extra thing at your party. And I would have people do it. They roll and it's like, oh, you got a three. Okay. And on the three, maybe it was a bottle of soaks or maybe it was a jar of sprinkles or maybe it was $20 in credit. And they didn't get those things until their party held. So it's really important that regardless of how you're partying, you do have a system for getting new parties because as someone who had a big old goose egg of zero for October in September, I was like, huh, okay, I got to figure something out. I got to figure something out. And thankfully I had a great September party that three people booked off of three people played the virtual dice game. Um, and so that right there is introducing me to new people. And that's what all of this is. The launching, the relaunching, the doing the parties is all to introduce us to people that are not a part of our warm market. Our warm market, 
you know, I love, I love my friends. I love my family, but those are the first people to ask for a discount. Those are the first people to flake on you. It's just reality. And I was telling somebody the other day that one of my very best friends, a girl that I have known since ninth or 10th grade, I can't remember. She didn't buy from me until five years into my business. Did I gift her pink zebra for her birthday? Yup. <laughs> did I, I mean, did, was she very aware of what I was doing? Yes. I'm pretty sure I probably invited her to my lunch party too. And it just never, it, it just didn't happen. <laughs> um, she didn't come, she didn't buy. And she saw one picture on social media, not a picture where I was like, Hey, look at this cool thing I'm selling. It was, Oh my gosh, we are ready for football season in our house. So it was the football accent shade a couple years ago. And that caught her eye. That was the thing that she needed to see to go like, oh, okay, I need, I need to place an order. And so I've had her as a customer ever since. If I had just, if I had let the fact that she wasn't buying anything from me, like let that be a, a holdup for me, then I wouldn't have met all the other couple hundred people. Or I mean, at this point, I don't know how many people I've met um, in my business. But if I would have been like, oh, Ashley hasn't bought from me yet. Pink zebra sucks. Like nobody wants to be my customer. That would have stopped me from from like all the other customers that have come my way. Um, it's I'll be on. I mean, I'm just gonna keep it real. I know y'all would expect nothing less from me. That's the the thing that that bugs me the most about direct sales is that a lot of people come in with this this idea that all their friends and family are gonna support them that people are going to fall over themselves and come out of the woodworks to be their customer just because they say, hey, I'm selling this thing now. And that is not like you hear on those weight loss commercials, results not typical. That is not typical results. Um, it's when you, when you figure out how to build relationships with people outside of your warm market, that's when really awesome things happen. That's when you're able to move up in your business, earn incentive trips, earn annual sales awards and all that good stuff. Um, and so if you take nothing else away from today's training, um, just take my advice that that moving past your warm market is a really good thing. It's a really important thing if you want to be around Pink Zebra for the long haul. I think I was talking, I might've been talking to John the other day and I said, you know, I said, people come in and people come out and don't be upset if somebody who joined with you within the last year doesn't, doesn't stick around. It, it's normal. It happens. Um, but we, we take those things so seriously. I was for sure guilty of it. Um, someone would <laughs> ghost me or someone would message me and say, I'm really sorry, but I don't want to sell pink zebra anymore. Um, I would be like, oh my gosh, I failed them. No, I didn't. I didn't fail them. This, this served a purpose. Um, and some people, the reality is some people are not willing to do what it takes to get out of that warm market, meet new customers and, you know, grow their pink zebra thing to something that can actually like make them money. And that's just reality. So Again, don't take it personal. Okay, now let's talk about customer service and follow-up. And this is my favorite topic ever that you guys have probably heard me talk about a million times. So we've had these parties and we're getting new parties and now we've got customers and we've been, you know, we've been working our little businesses and it's like, okay, now what? And so, you know, I'll tell you guys what I do and um, I'll tell you other options, but you have to decide like a follow-up frequency and you have to commit to sticking to it. And I'm looking at myself. I'm gonna look right at myself when I say that because I am not the most perfect, at least not lately. Life has been a hot mess express, um, but I'm, I'm on the struggle bus currently with follow-up, but I, I still have a system that if I said, okay, today for an hour, I'm just following up. I wouldn't be scrambling, looking at order forms or anything like that. I wouldn't be um, starting from, from square one, but follow up, you can follow up a couple different ways or a couple different frequencies. So two plus two plus two is probably the most common. 
two days, two weeks, two months after an order, that two day is your thank you. So that might literally happen the minute they give you the order. Like if they give you an order or go on your website, Michelle, I'm just, you're the consultant in this scenario. And I just ordered from you and you're going to be like, Oh, got your order placed, Melina, or Hey, I saw your order come through. Thank you so much. I'll be keeping an eye out for your shipping. You'll get an email when it ships, but I'll be stocking it for you too. And I'm just so excited to hear what you think. Okay, check that today is done. Now you can take it a step further and you can pop a thank you card in the mail, especially if they're a new customer, but that's your prerogative. It's your business. And then that two week follow-up is Melina got her order. And Michelle's like, I saw your order was delivered. Have you, have you dug it out of the box yet? What did you think? Was farmhouse cider as amazing as I told you it would be? Um, I can't wait to hear what you think. I want to see your warmer setup and that kind of thing. And then that two-month follow-up is, are you running low? Can I get you anything? Hey, I want to send you a sample of this new scent um, that's co it's coming out next month. It's our Paisley's pick for November. Um, I, you know, it's, it's in kind of your wheelhouse of scents you like to sniff. So I'd love to send you a sample and see what you think. And then when they get it, then it's definitely like, okay, are you running low? And what'd you think of that cinch? Do we need to go ahead and plan to get you some when it goes live? And that's, that's essentially how, I mean, I think I just made it sound really easy. Did I not just make follow-up sound like no big deal? Because that's really what it is. I think, and I've been guilty of this. We think, okay, I'm checking up with them. It's, like, especially that two month follow up, I'm checking up with them and I'm like hoping and praying that they order. Like, please, God, I hope they order. But then we put so much pressure on ourselves, like, oh, I've got to say the right thing. But really, it's just like, you're running low on anything yet. Hey, can I send you a sample of something new that I think you're going to like? And people are just not expecting that. They're not expecting that, that, that level of customer service because they're not getting it from, and I've said this a million times. And I will say it to Target's face, but Target, yeah, maybe they send emails like, hey, did you get your order or whatever, or write a review for this. But Mr. Target is not calling up me saying, hey guys, or hey Melina, not hey guys, hey Melina, did you get your cute little buckets? <laughs> Tell me what you think about your little buckets. I think they're adorable. Um, but nobody asked. And so we're already doing something that the big box stores can't do. And we're doing something that not every direct seller is doing. I can't tell you how many times, because I shop with a lot of direct sellers, can't tell you how many times I've ordered and then like never heard anything. They put me on their mailing list. I get their newsletter every month. But have I, have, has anyone reached out to me to say, hey, Melina, what do you think of those, you know, nail strips you bought or Norwex cloths or that, uh, I'm trying to think of something else that I bought that nobody asked me about. I don't remember. Um, that foundation. Do you love that foundation? Um, so yeah, we're just, we're just, we just have this unique ability to take care of people. Like we get to give them the feel of shopping with a boutique without them leaving their house. And I think that's pretty cool. In addition to two plus two plus two, we've got another frequency, which is one plus one plus three. I like it less, but if it works for you, it works for you. It's one week, one month, three months. And so that one week follow-up should be in a perfect world. Remember the world is not perfect, but in a perfect world, that should you, that should be you kind of saying like, Hey, Melina, your order has shipped. I just saw that it shipped or, you know, it's on its way or whatever. One month, that just feels like such a long time to me. And that's why I don't love it. One month is just checking in to make sure you're loving everything. Like after one month, in my personal opinion, it is too late to be asking if they're a light bulb, you know, <laughs> busted in transit. Like, if, if, I mean, thankfully, I think most customers probably reach out to us before we reach out to them when something goes wrong. But that just feels like a really long time. But the one month is really just like checking in to make sure you're, you know, you've taken everything out of the box, plugged everything in. Did you like all your scents, this and that? And then that three month follow up will be your, your essentially your reorder follow up or just a touch base to say, you know, running low on anything or, Hey, can I send you a sample of something new? I'd love to get your opinion kind of thing. Um, and then the third follow-up timeline that I really, that I think is what I'm following 
uh, I'm following a hybrid between this and like two plus two plus two. Um, but really it's just following up monthly. And that, I think that's why I'm struggling with it so much because um, I have I have a, a lot of customers. I'm gonna look just at my customer um, tracker, you guys. I, there are total of 265 people on this list. And some of them have not ordered in a while. So I need to think about how I want to reconnect with them. Maybe they're not gonna order ever again, it's totally possible. Um, but I don't trust myself to be able to touch base with that many people on a monthly basis. So that's why I'm kind of not, but what I love about that, that um, timeline is if you're sending someone, if you're in club pinging, you're sending a customer a sample of the scent. Like if you were really good last month and sent out your pumpkin caramel swirl, well then this month, at least you know you can follow up with those people for that purpose, whether they ordered in the last couple of weeks or not. Um, so I like to use Club Pink as a, an excuse to follow up with people. That's a really, that's just an easy one because if they love it and they go, yeah, I need that one. I mean, I think people are now at a place that they're definitely ready for fall scents. August was iffy because the weather was still hot. Um, and I think this week it's kind of going to be weird here in North Carolina. Y'all, y'all are in South Carolina watching this with me. So y'all, y'all deal with it too. The South is just strange, but enough people are in that, you know, crisp autumn leaves mood, even if the weather is not reflecting that in their neighborhoods. And so, you know, now you're, you're touching base to say pumpkin caramel swirl. What do you think? And then if they love it, they're like, yeah, how do I get it? Or what, you know, does it come in cartons? That's, I get that question a lot. And I'm like, you can just get it in jars or you can get it in soaks. We have a bundle if you want to get a jar and a bottle of soaks. And sometimes people want to do that. Sometimes people just want jars. Sometimes people just want soaks. And then that opens up the door for you to say, well, is there anything else you're running low on or any other sense that you got to have? And so I do, I do like that. I, I do not have customers that order every single month from me, but I do have some that absolutely do. Okay, moving right along. I'm doing so good on time. There we go. So the next system that we need to have is how we're going to post on social media. And I recognize that I promised to do a social media training, and then I forgot. Count on this is like a mini training, and then I will do something much more in depth. But this is another place where I think people maybe have misconceptions or just don't have an understanding of social me media marketing. And I am not an expert. All I know is the wisdom that has been put in my brain by other really smart people that I've seen work in action. And so I would caution anyone in direct sales from using their personal timeline as the place to market their business because the last thing that our friends and family want are to come to Facebook and to be sold to. It's already bad enough that they can't talk about buying a new toaster around their phone because Facebook's going to show them toasters. I'm a firm believer of having a dedicated business space, but what I do think is really important to do on your, on your personal social media and I can share my screen real quick because I think this is important to see. So we're going to go to um, my personal uh, page or whatever they call it. So I think it's really, really, really important that this little link I've got here under my intro is something that everyone has. Now, don't say that you're the chief sprinkle diva at my business page because that'd be weird. But who are you at your business page or who are you at your customer group? I think you can link a group here, um, but I know for a fact you can link a public page. And now years ago, if you would have said, Melina, do I start with a group or do I start with a page? I would have said page. I would have said page all day because that was 
the way social media, like for direct sales was kind of like, that was the trend. Now I'm going to say all day, group, 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 group. Um, that's where I spend the majority of my time with my customers in my group, but I keep my page as active as possible, even if it just means one or two posts a week, because I want it to stay like top of mind for Facebook. I don't know. I don't know if that works. Um, I don't assume to understand the Facebook algorithm. Anyone who tells me they understand the algorithm, I don't believe them because I don't even think Facebook knows how their algorithm works other than they're listening to us and our need for a toaster. So I just do the things that I know um, give me like credit in Facebook size. And that's having that public page that comes up in a search. You can find a Facebook business page in a Google search. You can find a Facebook business page in a regular old Facebook search. I've had people reach out to me before on my business page and I go, hey, how'd you find me? They're like, I just typed Pink Zebra in Facebook and your page was listed. They're not even in my same state. Again, this is why I don't assume that I understand anything about the algorithm. But I'd say create a page, if nothing else, as a, um, I'm gonna call it a low risk place. Hi, Sarah. This is a low risk place that people can learn about your business and they are not committed to being in your group. And maybe in the beginning, you post there a little bit more, but honestly and truthfully, I'm good to do like one to two times a week. I am trying really hard um, to do more on Instagram. And I learned that on my Instagram account, which I have set up as a business page, when I post there, I can also post on my Facebook business page. So that's kind of helpful. But this right here, um, just let's, if someone hovers over your name on Facebook, um, cause they want to see who, who you are, learn a little more about you, then they're going to see this. Cause it's going to be like your job. Essentially. Um, I also have my website link just in case people were peeking around, poking around. And then I did include some pink zebra related photos in my there. This is called featured photos. So I've got a mouse pad. I've got a picture with my business besties. I've got a picture of Jason and I in Ireland, a picture of me on stage. I linked my group and I linked my business page here. And then I've got my sweet little fur babies and a really cool picture that Jason had printed for me. So there's that. I do post business stuff, but not regular, like not promotional stuff, if that makes sense. So like I was at an event on October 2nd. I took a picture of my table. I tagged where I was at. And that just really just shows, I, I do, I think I do it more for like my team to like show my team I'm working. Like, hey, Melina's, Melina's out and about doing the thing. But also it's, it sometimes catches people's eye to be like, ooh, what's that? What's that red, white, and blue warmer? You know, you just never know whose eye you're going to catch. Um, and then... Other than that, I mean, look, you guys, there's not a whole lot. It was John's birthday. I wished him happy birthday. Posted a photo of us from reunion. Um, this post I'm going to need to talk about <laughs> in a separate training. Remind me, y'all. We'll talk about this on another day this week. Um, but yeah, for the most part, not a whole lot of like promotional business stuff. I love this. The masked singer. That cracked me up. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of like how I'm doing, like my personal page. Um, it's, it's meant to be more of a highlight of my, my business journey. That's, that's what I was trying to, to get at. I do want to just quickly talk about the types of things that I would recommend that you're posting in your group, your customer group, um, and, or on that public business page. So the rule to follow is 80-20. Is so 80% should be non-promotional post. So they can be Pink Zebra related, but it might be like a this or that. It might be like um, a fun little engaging game, like guess how many sprinkles. I did do a guess how many sprinkles are in this jar one time. And I, <laughs> I don't recommend doing that because you then have to count all the sprinkles. 
and that was that was torture i need a i don't have a product nearby but it could be like okay you guys this is my new warmer <laughs> like it could be like okay i just i just set up my new warmer and i don't know what to melt like what are y'all melting today and so that's business related but not hey buy this thing um i also really like the, and this is this is its own training as well but like figuring out what makes you special what makes you unique what are things that you love and sharing those types of things in your group and on your page so that people can get to know you i did a post today in my customer group because i wanted to have some information for you i just asked aside from the products why why do you um why am i your pink zebra girl um, someone said, because I love you. <laughs> someone said, because you are so much fun. Um, some people uh, numbered theirs uh, because I adore you, because I wish you to be successful. And now I happen to love the products, but if not for you, I would have never tried them. Someone said, my daughter told me you were a sweet lady and she was right. Um, someone said, your energy. And so that right there, you guys, if there was ever a secret, to pink zebra success, it would be like letting people fall in love with you. Even if you're not perfect, let them fall in love with you. And the way they fall in love with you is by getting to know you. Um, Simon Sinek, some of y'all may, may have heard um, of him or seen things that I've posted. He says, we don't know the exact moment when we fall in love with someone, but we know it's not the first date. And it's sometime before like seven years. <laughs> it's somewhere in that time frame. And so it's just um, giving people an opportunity to get to know you, to know like what, um, what your hobbies are, what um, things get you really excited. Uh, if, I, if I did a separate post in that group to say like, hey guys, pop quiz, what are things I love? They would know socks, pins, um, boy bands, they would know, <laughs> they know all my things because they're not just customers. They are now like friends of mine. Um, and so, you know, the sooner that you can, can get these people to really like, to, to just love you. Um, that is, that is when like some just, just amazing things can happen in your business. If all you're doing is just posting look at this it's for sale you're you're missing out on like they'll never love you they just won't um so again we'll dig way more into social media really really soon it might just have to be a bonus training that i do this week and that's fine um the next thing we're gonna talk about is is sponsoring so we were talking about our party system one of your party posts should be something about the business opportunity, whether it's sharing like things that you've been able to do or experience or whatever because of your Pink Zebra business, or it can be a place for you to just let them ask questions. Um, I never assume that people do or don't want to know about what it's like to be a Pink Zebra consultant. And so I give them an opportunity in the party to just ask questions. And a lot of the times it's the same questions over and over again. So if you don't know the answers to these questions, then it's a really good opportunity for you to, to learn the answers so that you can share that. So it's how much does it cost to get started? What's the minimum to be active? Um, occasionally I'll get the, do I have to build a team? Um, but, but it's just those simple, basic things. And you know, that's just an easy post. I do it as an after party post. So I wait till the next day uh, or even two days later, because in most cases, my parties do not close the night of the party. Um, that would be great if I could figure that out. But I'm also relying on the post office to get people samples. And I'm also relying on this employee to put all the sample bags together. So, you know, lots of variables. Um, but with sponsoring, I encourage you, if someone, if someone shares a little tinge of interest, you make a list, you put them on the list. That doesn't mean we like attack them and say, oh, join my team. But it's uh, maybe you send them one of the opportunity 
um, brochures, or maybe you invite them to our opportunity group, or maybe you invite them to like an opportunity night just to come learn more, or maybe you just stay connected with them just as a person and just plant little seeds along the way or keep them informed of what's happening in your business. And then when the moment's right, um, you know, maybe they come to you and say, I'm ready to do it. Or maybe you just say, I just been thinking a lot about you. Um, and, and, you know, just want to know is now a better time for you to give Pink Zebra a try. Um, so having that list, that's super, super important. Um, the next thing we're going to talk about kind of falls under social media, but it's also kind of its own beast and that's building your group. And, you know, I know, um, we, number one, we should not compare ourselves to other people, but my new friend, Katie Lutheringer <laughs> has like 3000 people in her group. <laughs> I have 192 <laughs> and that's, that's, the scale's a little, little, lot, a little tilted um, because I have, I have way less people and I've been doing this longer. And so, you know, I got in the mindset of, oh, I should have more, you know, it did get me thinking though, that I need to be a little more, I need to make it a more of a priority. Um, and so you can do that a number of ways. Number one, um, that can be a party post. <laughs> Everything can be a party post, but it can be, it can be a party post. It can be a, Hey, let's stay connected, you know, uh, join my, join my customer community or my customer group here to stay up to date on what's new and awesome with Pink Zebra. And then maybe you do a monthly drawing. Maybe, um, there is a really cool feature and I'll have to show you how to do it, but you can go and see who's most engaged in your group. Or you can, you know, just do a monthly drawing based on, you know, who all is in your group. And maybe you say to them, hey, I, I do a monthly prize drawing. So come hang out in my group and stay connected on what's going on with Pink Zebra. And you'll be in a monthly drawing, um, however you want to do it. And sometimes it's just like someone purchases from a Facebook party and maybe they didn't join then because they bought because they really, they bought maybe because they knew their host and they want to support their host. But now that you've messaged them and thanked them, sent them a thank you card, done that initial follow-up. Now they're like, oh, this person like really cares. And so then maybe that's the opportunity to say, oh, I just noticed you're not in my group. I'd love to invite you in there so that you can stay up to date on what's new with Pink Zebra. Um, and so it's just actively like, just keep just making that a priority. Again, I told y'all this training is not the fun stuff, but it's the really, really important stuff. Okay, we're almost done. I have three things that that definitely I want to talk about. And then I have three that have stars by them that may or may not apply to you. So I'm not going to touch on them as much. The next is samples and tracking them. And so I just within the last year, y'all started bulk sampling. And that's where I would sit down and I would take a carton or take a jar or whatever, whatever it is that I had that I was going to make samples from. And I made a lot of samples of that one particular scent. And that way I could put it in my little shoe organizer in my closet. And so if someone was like, I like clean scents, I could be like, oh, I've got laundry fresh. And I had them already made, ready to go. Before that, I was one of those make to order um consultants and that is not a good use of anybody's time so instead of doing that i took the sprinkles i had and made the decision that i needed to bulk sample and so i'm now at a place where the samples that i made in like early august have started to dwindle down so i'm in the process of restocking my little sample organizer so number one that's a really important system and you'll decide on how often you need to do it based on how many samples you're sending out. But the other part to that is tracking what you're sending people so that you can follow up because there is nothing worse than checking in with someone that you sent samples to and they go, I really liked the blue one. And you don't remember what the heck you sent them because I have been there before. I'm like, oh yeah, that blue one's great. But I'm like, crap, was that sea salt and vanilla? Was that clean? Was that morning delight? I don't know. So um, I encourage you to keep either a paper or a digital tracker 
of what you are sending people. The next one is goal tracking. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Michelle. I didn't want to interrupt you while you were talking. So um, samples, you said earlier that you, when you do a party, you send samples to party guests. You give them, okay. And so I do too. Um, how many samples do you send them? Typically three. And do you keep track of that? Are you keeping track of even those samples? Okay, so see, that's where I'm like way behind. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so I have, uh, and I should have talked about, well, I can talk about it now. We're still talking about samples. I have a Google form that I, I share the link. They fill that out and it captures name, address, cell phone number. And I like to text them a tracking link for, for their, their smell mail. I'm sending all of mine first class, but I'm using pirate ship and pirate ships. It gives me tracking. So I really, really like that. Um, you, depending on how you're sending yours, you may not be spending as much as I am. Um, you can absolutely send two or three samples in a number 10 envelope with a little, like I use, I swear by these, this, this is gold to me. Um, so I put the samples horizontally in this middle part and then close that bad boy up and I'm putting it in a bubble mailer. Um, and I, I was telling somebody about this. Sarah said Google form was a game changer. Isn't it though? Isn't it though? Okay. Um, I decided last year when I wasn't able to do home parties and get mileage deductions that I needed to spend more on shipping. And so I invested in a roller printer and I'm shipping things in a bubble mailer. So everything just like looks prettier. It costs me a little more, but I feel like it kind of, it pays off in the end, but you can still put samples in this and put it inside of a number 10 envelope and probably ship it for half what I pay for mine. Use that Google form and that captures all that information that you need from them, the types of scents they like. I even ask them like, what colors they decorate their home with. I just like to get to know them and get a sense of, um, you know, just, just how they like to decorate, what colors and what's their um, decor style. And I have all that in my Google form. And then when it's time to send them samples, I'm putting, you know, their name. So I know, you know, who they are, where they came from. And so I'll put like the host's name. And then I'll put the the scent, the actual scents that I send them. Kind of like with your Google form, I do one very similar because I, I think I took from from yours and I'm gonna lie. Uh, <laughs> I mean it's but it comes in handy in like because I I'll post it in the parties and that's kind of I mean it has it has started out to where it was just people that were, you know, in my VIP group, but it's grown and it's like mm -hmm. nice to see it like grow. It's like, oh wow, look at all those names and not yeah. I know. I I was looking at <laughs> I was looking through one. Um, because I have multiple. I don't know why, but I guess I just get excited and create new ones. Um, but I was looking and I was like, I don't even like some of these people I know and some of them I I don't even remember anymore. Like they either bought one time or they didn't buy from the party. Um, that's another thing. Someone asked me like what percentage of people I send samples to purchase. And I think my safe answer is 50%, but sometimes it's more. Um, rarely is it less, but it happens. You know, the people who do buy make up for the expense of the samples you sent to the ones who don't. But I find um, that most people are making a purchase, even if they don't do it right at that party, um, you still invite them to your group and still stay connected with them because maybe they were in a financial bind, and you know, two weeks a month later, they're like, "Oh, I'm I'm ready for I'm ready now. I'd like to place an order." Um, so just because they didn't order at the party doesn't mean that they won't. Okay, the next little uh, system I wanted to talk about was just goal tracking, and so because we are you know, still in a, in the early part of a new pink zebra year, um, we've got pink sapphire and white sapphire and even blue sapphire to track towards. We've got our incentive trip. We're in almost the middle 
No, not quite. We're like in the one third mark um, of the incentive trip. And then um, we also, you know, have people that are working towards promotions. And so um, I think there's no, I think we have all the trackers that we need for those things, but just, I just wanted to bring that up as um, just a reminder. So if you are working towards your incentive trip, you know, either using the tracker that Pink Zebra's provided for us or the really super fun coloring sheet that Jennifer Osmond made for us. Um, same thing with, with Pink Sapphire. I think we're supposed to be getting um, a tracker from home office soon to track it for us, but I'm still tracking my own numbers, keeping an eye on that. And I'm keeping an eye on other people's sales too. <laughs> um, I just, I, I don't have to be the first to know when someone hits Pink Sapphire, but I don't want to be the last to know. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's just really, really important. And even if you're not working towards any of those goals, if you have your own other goal, so maybe you have your own tracker for that, or, you know, you're just keeping tabs on like ZebraNet. And I know some people who log into ZebraNet every day and whatever their personal volume is, they write it in a calendar because they want to start to see a trend. They want to know like, okay, where am I at? Usually on the 15th of the month. So they can flip back to previous months and go, well, okay, last month at the 15th, I was here. How am, how am I comparing? You know, because you only really want to compare yourself to yourself. So it's okay if your goal is different, but whatever it is, track it. And then the last big thing that I want to talk about was just team tracking. And so I am right, like I haven't done it yet, but I'm getting ready to create a tracker for myself so that I can track the times that I connect with people, that I check in with people on our team because I don't want to miss people and I don't, I don't want to forget people. So, you know, I just wanted to throw that idea out there. I think most of the people on our team who have a team don't have a team group for them yet. And that's okay. I zoomed the other day with our executive consultants and above. And I said, like, whenever you're ready to have your own team group, like go for it. Like you don't, you don't have to ask me, you have my hundred percent blessing, but also don't feel like you have to run out and do it because there's this expectation. Like when your team is 232 people, how do you keep in touch with people? And I, I won't keep in touch with everyone. Um, it, that doesn't make sense, but for me, it's my, my personal team members. And then, you know, I want to stay connected at least to their personal team members, my ones and my twos. That's really where my focus is. So I think that's just, that's a good rule in general for everyone as, as you're growing a team. And then the last three things that I'm going to just touch on really quickly, because they may or may not apply. One is an inventory tracker. And that's, you know, do you have, do you keep sprinkles, soaps? Do you keep just products in general on hand on a regular basis for events, for social selling, like your punch cups, your punch cartons, mystery bags, or any of that stuff? So if you, if you do have things like that on hand, like how do you track that? I would personally, I'd probably just make a list um, either on paper or on one of my little digital trackers so that I know that know what I had. And here's another thing. I want to take it a step forward for you. Know what you paid for it because, <laughs> because I, um, back in February when I was working like my butt off to earn that incentive trip to Aruba, I was selling the mess out of stuff, like so much so that I ended up closing four parties in my name that were all at the thousand dollar level. So I maxed out our host rewards. And at the time we could only get those non-fragrance things with our free credit. And I got a lot of free warmers, free, free, mostly free simmer pots or simmering lights, a handful of accent shades, and then I used my half price things for cartons of sprinkles and for soaks. I know that I've sold warmers since then that I got from those host orders at full price or even at a discounted price. And I had that flexibility because I know that they were free 
or I've sold sprinkles at a discount because I know that carton was half price. That just shows that shows you where your where your flexibility is, where you're able to wheel and deal. I've been doing buy a simmer pot, get a jar of sprinkles for free at my vendor events, and it has it has worked really really well for me. But I wouldn't, you know, someone might not feel comfortable doing that if they're like. Well, I paid forty dollars for this simmer pot, and I paid full price for this carton. Then you just can't necessarily wrap your head around it. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is scent flirt. I do not have a system for getting new scent flirt customers, and so that's something that's on my list to figure out. It's probably going to be, you know, making sure that I'm one sharing my scent flirt more often in my customer group and on my business page, and number two, personally reaching out to people who are really good customers to say, hey, you're not a scent flirter yet. You know, did you know about this program? Just wanting to make sure you're aware you can get monthly surprises, yada, yada. And then last is a newsletter. Um, Pink Zebra does not currently have a newsletter template for us. So that's something that's just been kind of on my mind for a really long time. And I just haven't really stopped to figure it out. But um, I think that email marketing is, it's important. Um, email can, can communicate a lot of information for us. And if you're using something like MailChimp, they're, it's super user-friendly. You can, I think you can add in like, you know, if you have a YouTube video or just a, maybe not just a video in general, but like a YouTube video, I think you can somehow link it in there. You can do pictures, you can do text. Um, people can reply to that email and it come right back to you. And so that's a good way to communicate. And so that's just something that's been on my, my mind to figure out as well. And my hope is that Pink Zebra makes that something like a tool for us to have in the future. I think we should. I know other companies that have basically a newsletter template. Um, it, it's automatically going to put like your photo from your website and then like they can put it, you know, like maybe you can choose a couple different options of what you want your newsletter to say. Like, do you want to highlight the monthly focus? Do you want to highlight Paisley's pick? Do you want to highlight uh, something else? And then maybe have like a place where we can put our own little message. Maybe it's just a cute little note to our customers or, hey, here's where I'm going to be this month. Like if you're doing vendor events, you can find me, you know, local peeps, you can find me here, here, and here. And you can find me on Facebook you know, every Thursday or whatever. Um, I just think that'd be really, really cool to have. And so until then we can make our own, but that's all I got. That's all I got. So any questions before I sign off? It's a lot. It's a lot, a lot. <laughs> I do have one question. Yeah, go ahead. Are you going to, at some point this week, and I know like you, I think you put something out for what you were doing every day, but are you at any point going more in depth on parties? Do you have do you have specific party questions? I don't necessarily know if it would be a question. Maybe it's just a like what else can I do type deal. So I have two two parties going right now. Um, so basically, the format for the both of them is is the same. Um, both my hostesses, they're they're very active, they're posting, and I have one that is like awesome. Everybody is participating. She got an order like the very first day. And then I have this one over here, like silence, like nobody. And she's even gotten on there and like, hey, you know, play some games. She gives away some great prizes and nothing. <laughs> like, and I just feel bad, but I'm not doing anything different than I am over here. Yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's all a numbers game. And so those, those poopy parties are bound to happen. It sucks though. I, I totally get it. I would feel bad for, for my host too. I guess number one, does your host work outside of her home? I don't believe so. No. Okay. So that, you know, I was going to say like, Who's she going to see over the next couple of days or week? Who can she share a catalog and some samples with to get some orders? Did the people in the party that's not performing well ask for samples? I had two people ask for samples. Two people. Okay. So here's, 
Here's the like in this other one that I did. There was sorry, there was 17. No. Like I was busy. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. Okay. So you know what I would do? I would I would reach out to the two people that that ask for samples. I'm not, I'm normally not one to say friend somebody who comes to your party that you don't yet have a relationship with or message them like I got a friend request and a message from someone from a party that I was invited to. And I just don't like that approach. I would reach out to those people and just say, Hey, your samples are on your way. I have a really like, I have, I have an exciting offer. I can only offer it to three people. Um, and I wanted to offer it to you first. Cause you asked for samples. Do you have a couple friends who you think would be really interested in getting some snail mail as well? And if they're like, yeah, maybe, um, then I say, okay, um, I talked it over with the host and talk it over with the host. Just tell her you're gonna, you're gonna, um, you're, you're, you've got an idea <laughs> to try and help her get some more interaction in the party. Um, I would ask those two people to each invite like three or four people into the party, make sure that they tell those people where to go request samples. That'll be some fresh blood, but also like, I would say, Hey, if you one or two, whatever number you're comfortable with, if one or two of your friends place an order on Susie's party to help her, you know, I've got a really fun prize pack for you. It doesn't have to be break in the bank, like you could literally like make them some deluxe samples bigger than normal. If you've got like, I'm trying to think, I don't know if you have any of the mini hand sanitizers or if you have any of the Stokes mini sprays that you can fill, like say, I've got this really fun, fun prize pack and I'm only offering this to three party guests. And so then that puts in, puts a little like, I guess it incentivizes them to help the party. Okay. Does that make sense? It does. It does. Yeah, that'd be one thing that I would try, but you know, unfortunately, sometimes our parties are just, they're, and, they're I just nice. and I just hate it for them because it's mm -hmm. like, I feel bad. Like, yeah, it's much easier when the host <laughs> doesn't do their part at all and their party sucks. Cause then you can be like, well, it's your fault. <laughs> But when the host does everything that, you know, that you ask them to do and they're super engaged, you know, that, that just stinks. Thank you all for being here. Appreciate y'all. If you watch the replay and you have questions or feedback, post it below.